Hello and welcome to the beautiful solar room in Milan K1. I'm Shaz from Reply's social network team and I'm joined here today not only by the keen minds, but the winners of the cybersecurity challenge Capture the Flag edition. Now, not only do I have them here with me in person in Milan, but we're also joined online in France and in Switzerland. So would you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm Ricardo, uh, I'm 27 years old, and I work at uh, Red Hat. Um, Hey, I'm Luca, I'm from Milan, and uh, I'm now 30 years old, and uh, I work here in Milan as well uh, at a startup. All right, hi folks, uh, I'm Fabio, I'm also Italian, but currently I'm living in France, and I'm doing a PhD in computer security uh, here in the sunny South uh, French Riviera. Uh, hi guys, I'm Aristide, I live in Switzerland now, and not so sunny Riviera of the Lac Le Mans and I'm working as a software engineer in a small startup based here in Lausanne. So Italy, France, Switzerland, that's a wide geographic range. How did you uh, come to meet each other and make a team? Yeah, so uh, actually uh, Aristide told us about the, the challenge. We have known each other for a very long time. So we chose to form this four people team and uh, play together. I was happy to uh, play with them, so I said yes. <laughs> We've been to university together. We've all studied at the uh, University of Milan, La Statale, at uh, <coughs> a lab called uh, uh, Laser, the best lab in the whole university. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So uh, how did you learn about the challenge itself? I guess that's one for me. Uh, well, I don't remember exactly who, but a friend told me about this competition. It was, I don't know, quite some year that I didn't take part in any CTF competition. So he told me, why not? This is based on four members teams. So we have a shot. We surely cannot compete with 30 large members team. But this one was limited to four people. So I said, why not? Let's, let me contact a couple of the guys that I used to play with and see if they are available. And that's it. Turned out to be working quite well. <laughs> You're here, so uh, I guess it did. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned that you hadn't taken place, you hadn't participated in any uh, capture the flag type competitions just now, but other types of uh, these challenges and games, have you practiced or competed in those as a team before? Um, not uh, as with this team. I mean, uh, we have played together uh, in a team Fufa team and uh, chocolate makers in the past, uh, all together with other people, uh, but we have never practiced uh, the four of us uh, alone. What about individually? Have you all taken part in games or challenges like these? Um, Many of them. We have, uh, we have played uh, uh, together quite a few years ago, but still we used to play together and also we took part uh, uh, individually in quite a lot of uh, CTFs during our student years mostly. Student, student years, nice. So uh, the challenge itself, tell me, did you have fun? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, what was the experience of uh, taking part? It was a great experience. Uh, personally, I like the fact uh, that uh, the infrastructure was uh, well developed uh, and the challenges were uh, online uh, most of the time because this is a problem that people don't think about uh, because uh, challenges uh, sometimes uh, are unavailable or have uh, issues uh, and this went very smoothly so congratulations to you as well for organizing this and uh, the difficulty was also uh, well calibrated and uh, it was a uh, uh, good difficulty for, for people team. Uh, can you explain us how you solved this Diagonal Plus Plus challenge? It was quite hard to solve. I guess uh, our residents should talk. <laughs> uh, the idea was that you were given an image. We knew this was a steganography challenge. Basically, uh, that is a particular branch of uh, forensic in which you need to retrieve some information that's been encoded into an image. Basically, you have something that everybody can view, but only if you know, if you know how the information was encoded into it, you're able to retrieve it. So there usually no, is no cryptography involved. You just need to know the, how the information was encoded. So uh, let me get some of the details. So this image had a first layer. Basically, it had a set of fewer codes hidden into it. 
And uh, when you, well, with some magic, you could make uh, an image where the QR code would be extremely visible. And one would give you um, a string that will look, look like a password, while the others just point you off to a recrawling video on YouTube. And uh, so, of course, we tried the, the, the first password, as guess as every other team did. It was very easy to extract, but, you know, always give a try even when it seems really, really easy. Of course, it didn't work, so we had to look farther. And since I am a quite old school guy, I didn't use any tool to extract the first layer of the challenge. I used the Python image library, and I noticed something particular. Basically, there were a set of pixel, which had a, a different alpha value than all the other pixels. And this set of pixels was exactly 2 over 20, 2 to the power of 20, exactly 1 megabyte. And so this was quite suspicious, you know, quite strange that you have such a precise number of pixels with a different alpha. So uh, also because I uh, did quite some other challenges that were similar to these, uh, I understood that there were some information encoded in the pixel that had an alpha value different from the other. So at the beginning, I, just, I didn't notice that there were actually three different alpha values for this pixel. And so I focused on trying to color them differently to see if maybe you know, something would appear in the image, maybe a text or maybe another image or something like that, but nothing came out. Uh, well, so I went through many, many, many tries, and at some point, though, I noticed that um, the pixel were not did not have only one different alpha values; they had three, and each pixel contains three other bytes of information besides the alpha channel. So you had one byte that would give you one, two, three values, and three values for each pixel. So basically, the intuition was that the alpha value will give you, uh, will tell you which of the three RGB values of the byte you will need to get. And extracting all these uh, and converting them into bytes, you would basically extract a small uh, FAT image that you could then mount uh, uh, as, a, as a disk image. And on top of that one, there were uh, a zip file and another couple of file, files I don't remember now. And so the zip file was password protected, but then you would remember that in the first step, you would you, you got a password looking like string. And so you could use that password to unzip the file and get the play. So, <laughs> huge amount of layers for this challenge. It was quite good. Uh, it actually remind me of a very fun challenge we, we did in uh, DEFCON qualifiers many years ago. Um, but yeah. So you said you didn't play together for a long time. So how did you organize your the team and the task? It was more like a vertical organization. So someone has one category of the CTF, or it was more like the most expert do the does the most difficult ones, and someone else does the easiest ones. How was it? Um, I guess it was uh, a mix. Uh, uh, initially, we started uh, uh, like uh, I, I took the binary, um, Fabio took the web, uh, somebody took the uh, miscellaneous uh, and the coding, the crypto. Unfortunately, we didn't have the fifth uh, uh, person. <laughs> But um, yeah, we started uh, like this, and uh, we chose uh, at the beginning uh, like to uh, focus on uh, uh, the first challenges, like the 100 point, uh, and um, we said, okay, let's focus on them first. If we are able to solve them uh, uh, fast, uh, that's okay. Let's try to take the first blood points. Otherwise, uh, uh, try to focus on the 300 points so we can. Uh, uh, get the, those points from the very beginning. Um, but of course, when you play CTF after a while, uh, you just uh, mix up everything. Like uh, uh, I go to coding, uh, somebody else who was doing uh, web goes to uh, miscellaneous, to crypto, and you try almost uh, uh, everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, uh, I think uh, I tried the challenge with him, and then, and then if, if he, he resolved it at the at the end and things like this. 
it's really important in uh, CTFs uh, and probably in life in general to be able to work together. So it's not like uh, every person does uh, a small part uh, and then uh, you know somehow everything fits together like a puzzle, but people need to uh, do something, ask for a bit of help, uh, uh, get uh, multiple people looking at uh, the same thing together and then uh, organizing themselves. So to maximize, uh, in this case, uh, the number of points that the team can score. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's, um, and so we, we were able to do that, uh, fortunately. I was saying that this comes easier with a four-member team uh, rather than a 30-member team or something like that. At the beginning, we were synchronizing on Slack for Saturday. Then on Sunday, we switched to a Hangouts call. That was easier to brainstorm. But still, I mean, in, and like in every CTF, it's like organized chaos. So at one point, I guess around 3 a.m. On, on, on Saturday, uh, well, 3 a.m. on Sunday, actually, we were solving a challenge. No, 3 a.m. on Saturday, yeah. Uh, I was solving a challenge, I guess it was web 200, and uh, when I, took, I got the key, and I went to Slack to pass it to the other guys, and I saw that Luke had actually sold like five minutes ago, and it was five minutes before me, so there are still some, some conflicts during the, during the CTF. There is a vision, yeah. Okay, so you talk about Slack. Did you just communicate in Slack or did you call uh, each other or how did you? Yeah, so uh, as you say, yeah, uh, we think, started. Yeah, uh, so in the, in the first part, we just used Slack uh, because there was no, I mean, it was enough to talk. But then the frustration, you know, when, to, when uh, higher and higher. So on Sunday, in Sunday morning, I think around the, on Saturday morning again, uh, yeah, around the 11 or, or after lunch, we, we started the big hangout. So we can, you know, uh, focus on the uh, remaining challenge, uh, challenges and try to brainstorm and to solve them. Uh, I think, you know, uh, it's, sometimes it's easier when you talk about something than just writing them. So that was, that was a good, good catch to call each other. It is much easier. Uh, for example, what uh, Adi yeah. yeah, told it's much, before, it's much, much easier. Uh, we had a bit of a problem because we were writing. Uh, it would have been better if we were in the same room, probably. But uh, we were just writing, so if I figure something out, I had to write it. Uh, but then maybe uh, Adi still didn't look at it immediately, and so uh, we had a bit of a delay sometimes. Uh, so uh, yes, if people can do these things in the same place, I think it's better. But we made it work somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, congratulations to winning the first ever Apply Cybersecurity Challenge Capture the Flag edition. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank, thank you. you for connecting online with me today. And thank you to the Keen Minds as well, not only for making the challenge, but being kind enough to join us here today. The next Reply Challenge will be about coding taking place in March 2019. So make sure you don't miss it. Ciao. Tschüss and goodbye. Ciao. 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 Ciao.